Welcome back to my training for Zaha. Today we're going to um, be looking at how to use um, mesh and uh, polygon construction and extrusions to create uh, superstructures for for buildings. And in this case, uh, our lovely little stadium. All right. Without further ado, let's let's get started. So obviously this design here is, would never stand up. So we would obviously want to put some sort of construction underneath that. So the way I found that works really well to do that is first let's hide the uh, mirror of this. You can see that. Let's go to normal lit mode. Let's turn on our wireframe. We don't need to see the ground. In fact, actually, we don't see anything except this object for now. So let's hide all the other objects. Press H on the keyboard to do that. All right. We don't see the light either. We can hide that as well. Okay. So. How do we do that? Well, the easiest thing to do is to select an edge that you wish to construct it from. So I'm going to do it directly from the isobar. That way, if anything happens to this, this curve will follow. But to do that, we're going to duplicate it. So we go curves, because I may want to change the shape of it. So if it's a structure, maybe I want to come down. I'll show you the flexibility of this method. All right, so let's get started. So what we need to do now is we need to duplicate the curve on the surface, which is here, just like on the isobar. Same thing as we did in the NUBS tutorial. So creates our curve. Let's turn on a grid. So we need a profile for our extrusion, which is going to create the superstructure. So I found the easiest way to do this is if you create a nerve circle. Okay, it looks very boring, but I found it's a very good way of creating a profile um, uh, shape. So you select the, the in, in the channel box here, and you can change this to linear. You're going to get a facet. So now we have an octagon. Now, from my studies of the, uh, the stadium, they actually use a sort of an upside-down triangle profile. So we need three sides. You could do four if you want to do a box section. So four would be a good one for a box section. Um, but we'll do three for this because that's what the construction is. Um, so the simplest thing to do would be to, while well, we've got the profile selected, select our curve. And now we need to go back into the surfaces. And we want to do an extrusion. Now, the thing with the extrusion, if I've got to reset, in order to do an extrusion from something at origin to wherever the curve is in three space, on the result position you want at path and you want the pivot to be component and then profile normal. Okay, everything else should be default. Nerves is good and complete is fine. So we apply. Now you can immediately see there that our profile is obviously too large and it's not orientated the way we want it to be. Although apart from that, if you look at it from there, it looks squished. But actually, you can see there, it's actually done a pretty good job. Now, the easiest way to change the profile is to literally select the control points. And then if you move it around, you can see that alters the, the model. So if you want to rotate these to, to an angle, hold on J and just snap it around and see if that lines up with what you want. So now we want to keep doing that until we get the top the way we want it. So I want it to be flat on top like that. So the V is pointing down or into the surface. Still not quite ready, so if I do one more rotation, holding J, there we go, there's our rotation. Now it's saying me that I want to go down this way, so if I go this way, that should, that goes out. If I go that way, it goes in. I can start playing around with the shape of where this goes. Probably good to do a reduction in size as well. I mean, it is quite a large structure in the building itself. You can see here by playing around with the, the, the position of the actual thing in 2D space, we're actually changing how the profile is being is 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 working within the surface. So we don't want to stick at the top, we want it just to be just on the inside of that. That's looking pretty good. In fact, we could just get it a little bit bigger. I don't think it could be any wider than the narrowest point. It's looking pretty good though. Yeah, I'm, I'm going to give us a bit more accuracy on the surface so by selecting it. Remember, you can always just dial up the curvature accuracy there in the shaded. So there, we got, I'm starting to get what we want. I think we could go for a little larger actually. Trooping now, let's try for a little larger.
and then play with its position again. There we go. Now, so see, it's going to stick out here in the back. This is why we have it as a separate curve. So if we now bring up those control points on either end of the object and start scaling it up to this, we can start playing around with the shape. And how that's going to meet in the center as well. You can see there, it's quite interesting. Control those points are where we want them to be. Okay, we don't want. To, I mean, we can sit here and mess around with this profile, but it's really doing most of the work. So let's let's turn this what would be a normal kind of construction. Yeah, I mean, you could do a texture map session of alpha channels, but that wouldn't be very very fun or mesh oriented. So let's let's convert this to a mesh, and then once we're in a mesh mode, we can then look at. Um, doing it into a, a superstructure. So let's do that. So the easiest way to do that would be this to a conversion. So let's go modify, convert. So we want nerves to polygons. Uh, we do want quads to begin with. And we'll do not control points, we'll do a general. Let's hit apply. Okay, you can see it's just made very few number of points. It's fine. Channel's good, so then we can change the number of points. So that's that way. We don't want more that way, we want more this way. Just increase this until you get roughly the, the spacing you want for your surface. You can hide your nerve surface for the moment, so it's just the polygons we see. And that's looking pretty good. Now you, you can see here if I if I can change this from quads to triangles, and that will do. And if you wanted to create them going one direction, you know, from about bottom to top all the way along, and that was your design, happy days. You can immediately see what's going to happen when we turn these edges into, into tubes. So what we're going to do is, actually, I, I think it's better if you do, well, it's up to you really, but I, if I do quads, and then do a, a thing where I go on top and say, now turn to triangulate, see, it will then try and do it evenly on either side. It's kind of interesting. So as it changes direction, it automatically changes the direction structurally, which is kind of fun. Don't know if that's significant and if we give it any strength, but we really are just trying to give an impression of a structure here. Okay, so now we need now we'll let the remains to do is for mash to run a cylinder along every one of these edges. So let's do that. So first we need to create a cylinder, so let's do that. There's our cylinder. Now it needs to be very narrow, so we want a radius to be 0 0.05. 0 0.05. Even 0 0.02. So it's a very thin kind of like strut we're after. Then what we need to do then is we go to our mesh controls and we go create network, which does a, a scatter of objects, in this case two. It's irrelevant really, because we're going to change the mesh, we're going to change the mesh saying distribute from linear to mesh. And I guess what our, our, this is going to be our mesh profile. So middle will drag it into the input mesh. And we want to change it from scatter to, um, Pitch. Okay. Still can't see that for some reason. Oh, I think I know why. Because uh, at the moment, there's probably just not a lot of it. See, it's only two in the repetition. So if we go back to our mash selection. So the first thing we want to do in the distribute, you've got to enable scaling and change this to 0 0.5, and then simply flood the mesh. Will give us the construction we want. And you hide the polys. You'll get your superstructure there. You see that? Let me show you now. I'm going to turn off wireframe for the moment. There's our superstructure. Looks a bit thin, so you just change the cylinder profile to 0.05. You can start seeing how that would become quite an interesting structure. And that could be repeated for the, the rest of the roof. Um, and you'd end up with you know the construction for the whole structure, which would be quite cool. So that's how you, um, and the other thing as well, as I said, the history is live. So if I was to say, I don't know, modify this master curve, use control edit points and pull this in, the superstructure goes with it. Which 
which is very cool. There we go. How to create superstructure using Maya, NURBS, and uh, MASH. I'll see you in the next MASH lesson soon. Thank you.